Yo, 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 what up, peoples? Happy Thursday. What's going on? Another beautiful day, man, for video gaming news. And more Fallout New Vegas. We might be finishing it up today, I think. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, hope everybody had a great day yesterday. Uh, during our weekly day off, um, we got some more content up on the YouTube page and everything. There's a couple more news segments that will be public here pretty soon, but uh, mostly everything else has been made public so far. So um, we're, we're getting caught up um, besides still needing to get caught up on some of the playthroughs and stuff being added. But um you know the if there are playthroughs let me let me say this if there are playthroughs that people are looking to go back and check out that uh they know you know we've done before and you want to go back and look at some of it or whatever and it's not on the youtube page it is on the twitch page those playthroughs will be on the twitch page um so just know that i'm just a little bit behind on getting some of the playthroughs made public on the youtube it's page it takes a lot of time man it's very time intensive. <laughs> so I do a pretty good job with staying up to date with, uh, you know, pretty current with keeping the new stuff up there. But it's very time intensive. And, uh, you know, I, I need to find some extra time to start getting some more of the playthroughs we've done. Um, made public. Uh, especially now I'm finishing Fallout New Vegas. We got... That's a long playthrough. We've got the Boulder's Gate 3 stuff. I've got some older stuff, too, that's not on there for sure. And, and, I mean, it's on the YouTube page. It's just not public because it needs all the details put in. Playlist, it needs to be put into playlists and stuff like that. But it will be in playlists um, on the, the Twitch channel, so just know that. Oh, man. Um, I guess on that note, dude, let's do what we do. Let's hop in here, man, and uh, see what we got going on in the world of video game gaming news this morning before we uh jump in and keep playing our playthrough of uh Fallout New Vegas side note I just want to see you dance chat um side note there is uh we're gonna be ending the stream today with the Xbox uh showcase there's a a uh an Xbox uh, Phil Spencer um Matt Booty, uh, some of the other executives, uh, brass of the Xbox gaming, you know, all that uh, Microsoft gaming and the Xbox division and stuff that they're going to be having a, uh, some announcements, a bit of a showcase today, if you will. And it kicks off at about two o'clock PM CST for us. So, um, that would be 3 PM Eastern or noon Pacific. Convert that to whatever time, other time zone you might need. But uh, 2 o'clock p.m., that's my time. So channel time here. That's uh, that's whenever we're going to be finished gaming for the day, and we will go watch that showcase. We also heard on Tuesday there might be a Nintendo Direct. We'll try to find that in the news this morning. If there is, then we'll try to find out when that's happening, and we'll try to watch that as well, okay? So, um, we will be watching the Xbox Showcase, and if there's a Nintendo Direct, we will watch that too, but that has not been made official as far as I know, but I didn't look into it yesterday either. I had a pretty busy day. So, uh, let's get in here, man. Let's see what we got. Oh man, I'm about to sneeze. Yep, it's. Yep. Um, I might not be done. Nope.
<laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Let's see what we got, man. Yikes. Avatar the Last Airbender multiplayer fighting game in the works. We'll, we'll take a peek. We'll see what this ha has to offer. Probably not a lot of details yet, but we'll see. Um, why wouldn't they like love video games? They're people just like everybody else. People love video games. <laughs> Regardless of the different, you know, demographics you might be a part of, you know. Regardless of skin color, uh, ethnicity, eye color. You know, even gingers, I'm sure, love video games. <laughs> you know, like, come on, dude. <laughs> what a weird title, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, of course they do. They're people, man. Yeah. Jesus. What? All of the best video game love stories are queer. I also... <laughs> God dang it, dude. You know, look, I, dude, I'm, I'm a supporter of people just living their best life, dude. I, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm coming from a, a straight, uh, individual. Dude, I don't care if people are, you know, gay or pan, you know, whatever, dude. I don't know. Live your best life. I don't care. But to say that all of the best video game love stories are queer? No, dude. Come on, man. Who's writing this crap, dude? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Yo, where are my PC boys and girls at, dude? Yo, yo, yo. Sony wants to improve PlayStation profit margins with more aggressive PC release strategy. <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's a win, baby. That's a win. You know what? I, you know, uh, I talked about, I'll just preface this real quick with a couple of sentiments uh, that are popping into my head. You know, whenever the, um, the pandemic hit, I kind of had noted that uh, I started streaming at the beginning of 2021. Obviously, we were well into the pandemic at that point, you know. Um, but you, you, one of the things I had noticed with PlayStation was um, it, it had to feel bad with how much of a lack of hardware there was for people to be able to buy and play their proprietary first party games, right? And so, whenever you approach a situation like that, they would have been doing much better had they had a lot of their first party games at least on PC. I didn't ever expect them to have their games on Nintendo's platform or, you know, their, their first party games on Nintendo or Xbox, but to have them on PC could have been very, very profitable for them, right? And we've seen since that time, they've been adopting a, a, um, more progressive stance at, at, uh, you know, get in here, bro. I've got a seat for you, brother. <laughs> What's up, dude? You know, they, they've, they've slowly been getting to where they're releasing their games faster. We've already seen about a year and a half ago, they said that they're going to be releasing their games faster on PC than they had in the past and things like that. It's still not real quick. But, I mean, you know, we always knew that they weren't going to be releasing their games like day one on PC or anything. They're not going to do the Microsoft thing, right? We know that. Microsoft has an advantage on that front because Microsoft creates Windows. 
<laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, for them, it's like a win-win. For PlayStation, it's not necessarily. But the more uh, platforms that your software is on, the more potential, you know, sales you're going to have. Yeah. And so that's, you know, my segue into the other thing that I'm seeing is, you know, when you look at at the uh, market share of where a lot of the um, revenue is being brought in from the gaming industry, um, mobile brings in a ton, a ton, right? But PC is the next biggest. PC's the next biggest, and uh, all of the console players combined um, don't match up to what PC's doing. By, I think, about 15 billion worldwide. Something to that effect. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's been that way for a long time. I mean, we looked at the graph earlier this year. Let's see if I can pull that graph up, and we'll, we'll talk about it uh, also. Um, gaming. Video game. I probably need to put video gaming. this it's this bad boy this uh this yeah so it was that first website too yep right here cool man yeah 50 years of video game revenue check it out we saw this earlier in the year it'll be good to talk about this in in conjunction with sony um bringing things to pc if you look at where we're currently at right well i mean this was 2022 as well yeah so i mean look at mobile mobile sitting at 101 billion dollars in 2022 now understand this is fiscal year not calendar year this will be fiscal year i'm almost positive it doesn't explicitly say that but that's why that's the way numbers are generated in the gaming industry fiscal year not calendar year right just a, a bit of g whiz for you there but if you look at console they're considering console right and obviously console would have changed through the years depending on the kinds of consoles that were out at the time but for you know roughly since about this time period you know we're talking xbox playstation nintendo all the way through this time period they ha are generating as of 2022 around roughly 30 billion dollars of revenue a year whereas pc is generating 45 billion on its own right um surprise arcade is above consoles what do you mean like instead of just being down here below it it's just probably to make it stand out more because if it was down here at the bottom you would be I'd barely be able to see it with how slim it gets dude i think that's probably why they did it like that you better watch your back you know what i mean if it was down here at the bottom with the black borders and all that stuff it would have been very very hard to pick out that arcade you know <laughs> I mean, it's it's negligible anymore. Arcade brings in very very little compared to anything else. So, um, now the thing that that's funny is you look at handhelds, and we still have a lot of handhelds in the market, but they're being instead of being looked at as solely just a handheld, they're being actually considered like the Switch is a console. The uh, PC, you know, uh, uh, handhelds are, are considered PC and stuff, right? So um, that's the way they're, they're considering. So it's not that we don't have handhelds. They're just being considered either PC or console nowadays. But, you know, this makes a lot of sense. You look at, at the profitability of PC over a console. It, I mean, you know, and yeah, just, no, you know, numbers wise here. And I know it's, it's probably a little bit. Let me, let me zoom us in here. That's probably a little bit better. Right? So you look at the, the 30 billion versus the 45 billion. This, again, is going to be split between all of those console companies, right? So PlayStation isn't even at 30 billion. And they, they know that 
you know, they have to see this and go, PC is very lucrative. <laughs> you know? So it makes sense also in seeing these numbers and the market share that PC has over console that they release that proprietary software in a timely fashion on the PC platform as well, right? So uh, I'm not surprised at all to see this aggressive stance being put into motion here by PlayStation. So um, again, with my thoughts about you know the pandemic and how that probably hurt them a bit um, with people not being able to have the PS5 hardware and not being able to play first party software and then into what we know now about what has happened since you know over the past like at least seven to yeah. ten years with the market share of PC over console it makes a lot of sense Video games that helped you fall in love with gaming. Dude, there's so many. There's so many games for me that help me fall in love with video games, you know? Obviously, they're they're they got some age behind them at this point. <laughs> but, bro, there's a lot. I think Final Fantasy One is actually one of the biggest catalysts for me. Final Fantasy One was a huge deal. But there's even stuff, uh, you know, like um, dude, I'll I'll give big props to games like. Uh, Like X Wing, X Wing was huge for me. And I mean, dude, playing that game on PC back in the day before even having an operating system and stuff, you know, like that was that was a, a massive one for me. I love X Wing was massive, dude. Step I loved X Wing. Um, there are a ton of games. The Eye of the Beholder games Step also, Step you know, were, were were huge for me. Um, there's a, there's a ton of games that were hugely in, influential for me and in, in just becoming the passionate uh gamer that i am today you know i think everybody has that and those are just some off the top of my head you know the early early days for me early early days yeah again look uh i've got a couple of videos um on the YouTube page right now, uh, addressing what we know already uh, and have heard about what's happening with Microsoft, uh, Hi-Fi Rush being brought to the table, Starfield being brought to the table for other platforms, uh, things of that nature. But we're going to get real definitive information today with the Microsoft um, showcase, okay? With Xbox's showcase and Phil Spencer and Matt Booty and and uh, all of them, you know, we'll 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 get a uh, a real good look, okay? So, and it, I'm not gonna dive into a lot more of this until uh, after today. That's a, that that seems like a low percentage there. 
honestly. <laughs> So less than 2% of games currently available in the market take into account LGBTQ related content. Uh, here's the thing that I'm worried about here. So, so they, they say less than 2%, but how many of those games actually even take into account the sexual nature of things at all? You know what I mean? So here's my thing. It feels like, and again, I'm a, I'm a, Dude, I'm all about people living their best life. Nobody should be discriminated against. You know what I mean? With, you know, whether it be race or sexual preference or whatever, dude. Just let people enjoy their life. As long as they're good people, dude. Just be good people. There are some people that, um, you know, I think exacerbate these issues. Um, they take things maybe a little bit to an, an extreme. There are always people in life that take anything to an extreme, um, and try to make more out of something than there actually might be. And I'm not saying there is not social injustice, um, when it comes to a lot of, of things, uh, regarding like minority groups and things like that. There absolutely is dude, no doubt about it. Um, and I think that the, the gaming industry has become more progressive. There's, uh, you know, we see stuff all the time about this. It. Like there's still not enough, uh, female roles in the industry, you know, or, or female representation in the industry. And it's like, Jesus, dude, I feel like I see, uh, yeah, yeah. Extremes on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Fair. Yeah. I think so. I think, I think so. Absolutely. Um, and, and you know, it's like, there's not enough female representation and it's like, man, I, I feel like I see female lead roles all the time nowadays, you know? And it's like, how, how are we, I know that, you know, traditionally, and it was definitely obvious, you know, 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, and even, and before that, right. That it was a traditional, the lead in most video games was like a stereotypical like 30 year old blonde or brown haired blue eyed dude or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean it was like <laughs> that's what most not that there weren't others you know like there was laura croft and and, and uh, you know there there were others right um funny enough most people thought that like um you know the samus was a male <laughs> the samus was a female which is hilarious uh right yeah yeah that's true yeah Yep. So there's, uh, I, I've always loved the fact that so many people thought Samus, uh, you know, was, was a guy and, and Samus was a female, you know, <laughs> you know, how triggering that, that probably was for, for some of those, like, you know, those macho men out there, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> It can't be. Uh, I loved it, dude. I thought it was great. But, you know, there's always, like, I think you've got to take into account, like, they're, they're saying that uh, less than 2% of games currently available in the market. Yeah, but how many of these games actually take into account of addressing the sexual nature of the characters in its game at all? Right? So you can't, you have to take that entire, if that's the case, you have to take all of those games and take them out of the conversation because they're not representing anybody in that aspect. Right? Um, so I mean, this is always the case. People want to try and exacerbate an issue by, you know, going, well, all of these games on the market and there's only 2% of them that actually you know, are LGBTQ inclusive, but it's like, well, what do you want? Like every single game should include LGBTQ plus stuff, even if they don't reference anybody's sexual nature at all. That's the thing that I'm worried about, right? That's the thing that I'm worried about. And if that's not the case, then, you know, uh, I, okay. But we need to be very careful here, right? Like, I think that's the thing that I'm worried about. And I'm all about supporting this community and everything. So don't misunderstand where I'm coming from. One moment, please.
So I don't know. I, I you know, I'm sure that there's still a, a lot of work that needs to be done. Or, you know, equal representation across minorities within the, the entertainment industry as a whole and gaming is going to be a part of that, you know. But I just want to make sure that, you know, whenever we read articles like this, we, we don't just take it at face value and actually think about what they're telling us here. You know what I mean? Because it, it does concern me. It's like, oh, you know, it, it just it concerns me that they're like trying to make more out of this than there is actually to take away from it. Yeah, that's what concerns me. Silent Hill 2 devs trailer wasn't representative of the game. Game Pass has two games with very positive reviews. Look out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that's what, you know, and you know me, Fair. We talk about this a lot, man. It's about, you know... that is absolutely a fact and another you know a part another part and a lot of what this comes down to is like it, it's it's like misleading it feels like this could be a misleading you know it it, it, it encroaches upon misinformation right because they're they're talking about all of the video games on the market and less than two percent of them take into account lgbtq related content whenever how many of the games on the market they don't talk about how many of the games on the market that they're considering in this data actually even reference any kind of you know sexual agenda or sexual preference by any characters in the game at all right so it it, it does encroach upon like a a misinformation type of of spread right yeah, yeah, exactly, dude, exactly. Which is why I didn't click on it, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's why I, and that's why I prompt people all the time. It's like, just be careful, you know? Like, think critically about this stuff. Either good or bad. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's why, you know, even with myself, it, it's just, you know, not everything I say is going to be 100% correct. People have the, I mean, that's part of being human, right? We, we have the, we're wrong on many occasions <laughs> yeah i mean we can't just be 100 percent correct all the time it's just the way things are that's why it's important for people to you know not just regurgitate everything they hear all the time you know fact check your stuff and it's so important for people to do that kind of thing but most people don't right they just want to inhale everything that they hear and regurgitate it and then you're also playing the telephone game right so it's like then it gets regurgitated, but it's also regurgitated in a way that's not necessarily stated the exact same way that it was taken in. Yeah, so it's just a, a very bad like snowball effect, right? And so I don't know. Yeah, people need to be careful about you know. But you're right. A lot of media outlets do this kind of thing on purpose too. They do it on purpose. They 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 write things in a way which they're like, well, we didn't lie but it's like no but you also didn't tell the whole truth either <laughs> you know you left out like key pieces of information there yeah so you didn't blatantly lie right they do it on purpose people need to be careful that's that's what it really comes down to <laughs> bro it's just spreading like wildfire too look here a live emission is still alive yeah 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 you're right yeah uh i agree look here it is again dude i just i i dude so is it is is this the premise then is the premise that 
if there are characters in a game, even if they're they're in no way, shape, or form, form um, you know, referenced in a sexual nature uh, type of way, if they're not explicitly pointed out as being part of the LGBTQ plus community, then they are a stereotypical heterosexual character is that what that means because that's the impression i'm getting it's it's a the impression i'm getting is that they are taking this as if a character or characters are not explicitly referenced as part of the lgbtq community they're automatically a normie or whatever you want to call them you know what i mean right right i know that's what i'm saying you know you know they're they're automatically a heterosexual stereotypical quote unquote normal character or whatever you know what i mean not the saying that lgbtq plus people aren't normal or whatever you know what i mean that's not what i'm i'm saying but you know it, it, it's like for the way that characters have traditionally been represented in, in entertainment or care, er, er, you know, you get what I'm saying. Not part of any other demographic group or whatever, right? So that's the impression I'm getting here. Is that if you're not explicitly pointed out as part of a group, it's just so weird, dude. I don't like the way that's headed. Why? Why? <laughs> and I mean, look, man, this is coming from like from me as somebody who like totally stood up for you know Alloy, in in <clears throat> um you know with Guerrilla Games, and Alloy being given the potential to engage in a uh same-sex relationship in the latest uh horizon now that we're friends again Chelsea. is it okay Holy if trappers, i pet you dude. <laughs> dude. thanks dude yo ten win just resubscribed for 30 months 30 months xd weep whoop only X six D months whoop. left until the three-year <laughs> anniversary xd we whoop Yo, thanks, brother. Incredible. Yeah, man. Jesus. 30 months. Jeez. Thanks, dude. Happy uh, happy Thursday, man. How's, how's life, brother? What's going on? Thanks so much, dude. You know what's funny, man? Tim, dude. Tim, you always come in, dude, with the uh, like the 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 resubs and the TTS, and it, the TTS always works for you, bro. And Psyx, it never works for Psyx, bro. I don't know what it is, dude. It never works for Psyx, dog. And Psyx be trying to TTS all the time, bro, and it never works for him. It works for you every time. I don't know what I don't know what's going. On. I think I feel like Ten Wins like <laughs> hacking the system and just doing it on purpose, just to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to like tilt out uh, Sayek, bro. Yeah, that's funny, man. What's new, man? What's going on, brother? So uh, again, you know, I've I've been a big proponent of e equality and uh, social justice and. And, um, yeah, everybody has the right to live their best life and to be who they want to be. And, um, you know, as long as it's truly something that's, that's coming from inside themselves and not being something that's pressed upon them by other people's influence or, you know, um, <clears throat> I think that's, that's a big part of it. Be who you are. That's fine, dude. Everybody's unique and be your best self. Live your best life. Dude, I'm all about that. I've supported so much of this stuff in the in the gaming industry as well. But it feels weird whenever, you know, it, it does seem a little bit weird here. It seems a little bit off, you know. I don't know. 
and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to read into it more, but I, I fail to believe, dude, with as much as I've seen in the industry of uh, the inclusion of LGBTQ stuff in games over the past few years, to say that less than 2% I mean, I, you have to narrow that down to all the games that actually reference characters at all in any kind of sexual manner. It has to be. Well, so, well, yeah, and that's actually a good point, Tim. When games that come from countries that where that's not allowed, that's actually a very, very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's a great point, actually. Great point. I didn't even think about that. My my big thing was like, how much of this? This is what I was talking. This is what Ferret and I were talking about, Tim. What I, my my question is like, are they taking this two percent? Uh, so they're obviously it's coming from the entire market. We've already seen it in a previous article headline. It they're taking it from the entire market, all games available, right? Um, and then it's like. But are they, you know, are they actually saying that, like, I don't think they're taking into account that there are games that actually don't reference romantic relationships at all or characters in a romantic sexual reference style in any capacity. You know what I mean? And if that's the case, dude, then you can't include that as, like, part of that number you know what i mean i think available hold on where was that at wait i passed it currently available on the market currently available on the market currently available yeah so that, that that's the thing i'm worried about is like how many of these games on the market actually don't reference any kind of sexual preference sexual nature romantic relationships at all it just they're just games that have characters and they're still being considered as games that don't reference lgbtq plus characters right and it's like dude that's not fair exactly dude exactly so there's i feel like there's a lot of um misleading stuff with this less than two percent because it like tim was saying also you know and mobile games i mean mobile games you know there there are mobile games that are gonna vary greatly by genre and stuff and i could see some of them having a the ability to show some of that you know what i mean but definitely not children children's games absolutely should not right non-character driven indies right any like like uh, 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 a, ra a race car game or something <laughs> you know what i mean it's like what yeah 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 you're exactly right tim yeah 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 right yeah exactly and that's my thing yeah that's the only thing i'm getting at again i've been a big supporter of you know, I'm always going to support people living their best life, being, being equal in their rights as anybody else would be and should be, right? But this feels misleading. This feels misleading when we, we see this less than 2%. And it seems like they're taking it out of the entire market and not taking into consideration, like, the things that Tinwin's pointing out and the things that Ferret and I were talking about previously with how many of those games actually even reference characters at all in any kind of sexual manner. Or, or, you know, their romantic, you know, preferences or anything like that. And if they don't, then you can't say that they're part of this, what should be included as games that don't include LGBTQ+. You know what I mean? Because how do you know if any of the characters are or are not, right? That's not fair. You can't do that. I don't know. It, it feels misleading. It feels misleading. If they're considering all of the games on the market currently. That's that's weird.
Oh, yo, look at that. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Dude, I guess. I don't know. They're flipping. It's just polluted with them, bro. I guess a new, this new study came out, and it's just like all of these outlets are just like popping up with it, dude. I don't know. Yeah, Blasphemous, dude. Let's go. Best of Switch games for adults. That's right, baby. Blasphemous. Good stuff. Yo, dude, it's good to know that they're, uh, you know, Team Cherry's still working on uh, Silk Song. I was, I was starting to wonder, bro. <laughs> I'm still not convinced we're ever going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. I know. Tim Win yesterday. Tim Win sent me this. This uh, at Tim Win will find these good like Twitter posts and he'll like shoot them to me. So he shot, shot me one yesterday. It was like it. It was like a Valentine's Day tease from Team Cherry or one of the devs. One of the devs from Team Cherry saying, "Just so you know, we're still working on on flipping Silk Song." And it was like, "Oh, great, dude." <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, they've never been like super, you know what I mean? They've always been a little bit under the radar with, with their, so they're not, they're not real out there about giving information and stuff, you know? And I respect it. I understand that. But I think the thing that's rough for me and for a lot of, uh, a lot of us that have been waiting on like, that game. And again, I don't want to rush a developer, right? I never want to rush a developer. Um, <laughs> we aren't getting a Legend of Zelda with Ganon as the main character? What do you mean we aren't? I think you put an N and an apostrophe T on there and you weren't supposed to. That was probably a uh, a misspell there. Yeah, that was probably an autocorrect or something. Uh, so, the... Uh, I don't want to rush Team Cherry. You know, I think all of us feel this way. All of us that are fans of Hollow Knight and have been waiting on this flipping, you know, Silk Song, this follow-up to, to Hollow Knight for so long, we don't want to rush them, right? But it's also very, very rough whenever we get, like, a year window where they're like, yeah, it'll be released within a year. <laughs> well played, dude. <laughs> Like yeah, you know, there's a yeah year window. It's gonna be coming out, and then it that year window is gone, and uh, long gone, and still nothing. And it's like, what is happening, dude? You know, um. And again, you know, for me and the way that I address this industry and everything, it's always a bit concerning for me. Whenever I am aware that com a company has been setting release dates and release windows and they're missing them and things like that, it's, it's, well, I understand that. I understand that, right? But it's still a rough look. And again, I don't want to rush anybody. Hollow Knight was amazing. We want the follow-up to be as good, if not better, right? I mean, I I get that. I get that. Why would a window be set like that, though? And be so entirely missed, right? I mean, I think that's where a lot of us are going. Where's the, where's the clarity? Where's the transparency about what, what's happened here, you know? Um, I mean, that window was is long gone, dude. And, and it was a big window. It was like, okay, well, you know, we're finally going to get it. And then the window's gone and it's just dark. You know, it's, it's a weird look, man. No doubt. Well, and that's my thing, right? That's my thing is, is everybody's just kind of theorizing about what's going on right now with the development of the game. And um, I understand companies wanting to be a bit hush about things. Absolutely. I, I'm at, you know, I'm one of those people. I talk about the relationship between us and developers all the time. Uh, it's been harmed on both sides. I, under, I understand to an extent why developers don't want to have open line of communication with us. Because there's a small percentage of gaming enthusiasts, uh, gamers, that ruin it for us right they're toxic they're nasty they 
they attack developers i get it um as well as you just don't want to let information out that you're not ready to release yeah and so the uh, the more you're open to information flow the more susceptible you are to potential leaks of information you're not ready to let out yet and, and that's not fun for developers either but it, it's a weird look right now i think you know most of what we've been doing for a while now is theorizing about what's going on you know so while i mean obviously i'm a huge fan of hollow knight i know you are too there's so many that are it's a weird look right now about what's happening, you know, and I know it's a small team and I wouldn't really be bringing this up had we not already had a, a year window that was long gone and then just really nothing. It was like they just tried to kind of like act like it was never a thing. <laughs> almost you know it's like it's like nobody wants to talk about it you know it's like <laughs> the window came and it came and went and they didn't go you know well this is what we're shooting for now it's just like <laughs> you know and we don't really have anything so it's it's just a weird look man and there's always in look i mean i've been doing this for a while now and i'm, I'm pretty good at, at picking out these indicators that something might be a little bit off in the the project you know what i mean and i can't help but feel like there's a little bit of con some concern there you know i feel like anytime you, you get a uh look delays are necessary oh five years ago yesterday interesting nice nice yeah no, I mean, I wasn't aware that it was, it was announced yesterday, huh? No. Um, had I been, you know, streaming and stuff, I probably would have come across it, but yeah. <clears throat> no, I haven't seen that either, Ferret. You can link it if you want, and I'll pull it up. Um, <clears throat> had I been streaming yesterday, I probably would have uh, come across it in the news or something like that, but yesterday was the day off, right? So I didn't see it. It's just, you know, these, kind, these kinds of things uh, are something that, that lead me to be a bit... Uh, you know concern about what might be happening i think i think that communications a, a, a pretty critical thing when it comes down to something like this nice dude that's cool thanks buddy i mean is it just me or does it feel like i've been waiting for like twice this long dude <laughs> I know, I know, obviously I have it, right? But, but Jesus, it feels like I've been waiting forever for this, dude. God dang. Oh, man. Craziness, dude. Yeah, February 14th, 2019, dude. Thanks, brother. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. I mean, again, you know, I, I'm... I, I think that Team Cherry is going to come out with something good i just you know it, that whole situation's a bit bothersome with the the very hush hush situation on top of the the uh the complete missing of the window and and not really addressing much of it after the fact and stuff is a little bit uh yo thanks dude yeah we can pull that up we'll take a look at that cool man nice uh timwin uh what did i see you playing dude Oh, you've been playing Elden Ring, huh? What is this crap? What up, Soup? Oh, interesting. Okay. Let's get the article. How about that? Let's read the article. Thanks, buddy. Yes, six is a pawn. <laughs> Yo, Timwin, thanks again for the uh, the 30-month resubby, brother. Impressive, dude, and much appreciated, dude. That's a lot of support, my friend. Uh, I think he's, <laughs> he's just trolling out about <laughs> PlayStation. He's always talking about PS6, too.
I mean, it's not they they the PlayStation platform has not had enough to entice me to buy into it over the past two generations, you know. And actually, I've got an article up right here. We're gonna read. Sony wants to improve PlayStation profit margins with a more aggressive PC release strategy, which means for all of us PC gamers, this is a win, baby. This is a win. Um, this means that, and I talked about this just a second ago, and we're going to talk about this being playing a part of it as well, but You know, I've, I've held off on a lot of, like, the God of War game. There's been a few games that have been pretty enticing, right? Sony, PlayStation makes pretty good first-party games. But it hasn't been enough to entice me to spend that, that amount of money on their hardware. You know? When I know they'll probably hit PC at some point. And now? Now that, that we know that they're going to get even more aggressive than they've already said they were going to be. We know it won't be like day one releases or anything, but probably like six month, six to, to nine month, maybe after release, something like that. We'll see. But that's that's good for me, man. I'll take it. Might be interested in PS6 if it could play all previous PS games. Um, I doubt it will. You know why? Because I don't think the PS6 is going to have an optical drive, brother. over not all digital either i think uh, i think that the the uh the optical drives are done i'm surprised that they even stuck with them for this generation we've already seen it right optical drives uh the discs space is not big enough even on the dual layer Blu-rays, you know what I mean? It's it's not big enough. They have to convert over to some kind of. I mean, obviously we know that they're moving over to a, a, a digital, more digital front, anyways. But if they're gonna be still releasing physical games at all, uh, dude, opticals gotta go. The games are too big, and they're just getting bigger. So unless they're willing to print multiple discs like we used to do back in the PS1 days, you know what I'm saying? They've got to move over to a different media. They have to. And I think it's going to be like micro SD cards and stuff. Oh, dude, Ferret, me too. I've got a ton of them. Gamers should study to become electricians and engineers just to be able to keep old consoles running so we can keep them working. Well, I mean, they're, you know, the older consoles aren't even all that complicated, really. And what's nice is that there are a lot. If you've got basic skills, basic know-how skills of, like, soldering, soldering and um, just basic electrical skills and stuff like that, then uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can repair on your own with like online uh, fix it videos and stuff. You know, if you can, if you can learn how to shoot out, uh, you know, with like a, a multimeter, you know, and, and find where electricity's running, if you can solder stuff, um, it's not hard, you know, it really isn't. Some of it takes practice, you know, but there are, there's this is the thing i tell people all the time there's so much information at our fingertips man if people have like a broken console or something usually there's some kind of guide online that can help you figure out how to find out what's broken and how to fix it man you know so it's it's a lot of the older stuff especially is uh is not too difficult people just have to want to take the time to learn how to do it the information is readily available you just have to want to know to take the time to to teach yourself how to do it <clears throat> but i agree with you tinwin absolutely no doubt about it no doubt about it but i also agree with ferret backwards compatibility is something that the console market has not been giving to their consumers forever in large part here and there they have but ultimately 
for like Xbox and for PlayStation, if they've been on disc for five, six generations, why have they not given backwards compatibility? We know that PlayStation has the capability for backwards compatibility besides PS3, and they've had it forever. They just don't want to give it, right? Because they're not, they don't want to give back to the people that have always been, you know, consumers and, and of their platform, loyal to their platform. They want to keep trying to suck more money out of people. That's why PC is such a great platform, man. You know, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about building a new PC and being, you know, locked out of all your older content or whatever, right? PC's great, dude, you know? Absolutely, fair. That's exactly what I was just talking about. Yeah, it makes them more money. They don't do it on purpose. It's the same thing. I mean, you know, Nintendo's got more of an excuse. Because they've changed media too much. <laughs> they've changed media too much. It, it, they've got more of an excuse. But you can bet your butt that even if Nintendo had been on, you know, optical the whole time, they'd be doing the same thing because they're the worst about it. Oh, that's cool, dude. Yeah, we saw it was coming to, um, we saw it was coming to, nah, Xbox isn't dying. Um, we saw it was coming to PS5, which is cool. Yeah, I probably, again, I probably won't read this, um, this it's just it's it's so much to cover <laughs> i do appreciate these though what i will do is i'll link this in the uh the discord i'll link this in the discord and this is cool uh it's for anybody that is in v rising is a dope game dude uh v rising is a dope game did have you have you seen did they say anything about the uh resource utilization Transmogs, nice, dude. Transmogs, not yet. God dang it, bro. They've gotta implement that, dude. That was the the. I mean, this game is so good. This game is so good. But the god, they they really need to do that. That's such, in my opinion, IMO. That is one of the more critical quality of life things that a developer needs to implement in a resource gathering base building kind of game man yeah 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 so so in in v rising you know um you aren't able to utilize your resources out of your storage right and there's so many resources dude so you can't utilize your resources straight out of storage to build or craft or anything like that within the realm of your castle right the heart of your castle or whatever um yeah, yeah, you have to have it on, on your character. So you've got to go room to room, box to box, you know, like uh, crafting table to crafting table, like all that stuff with with grabbing the resources, putting them back. And, and it's just it gets really, really uh, old really quick for me. I don't, I'm not a fan of, of games that don't implement resource usage out of your containers and v rising is a dope game dude i loved it it was so much fun it was a lot of fun to play um and multiplay dude we played with tinwin a little bit played with you ferret uh true and i played a lot together and the game is sick it's really really good i dude i i'm really stoked for the 1.0 release it's, it's gonna be cool to see what all they do but dude i won't play this game i won't even consider playing this game again until they implement the resource usage out of uh directly out of storage it's just too monotonous it's too cumbersome, dude, to deal with, in my opinion. Um, what are you talking about? What, what's this PC gamer thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, this hit our Discord as well. Yeah, that's cool. We can bring this up, though. Uh, 
What did you say? Not really worth it? What? Dead Island Riptide for free? Free games are free games, I would say. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, that's always going to be a... Um, we all have our respective preferences about games and stuff, right? And um, I mean, I've, I've already added it to my account. I'll pull it up. We'll talk about it and stuff. Uh, so, you know, everybody, I mean, a dude, it's just like you know all reviews 73 percent. so is it going to be something that's going to be phenomenal or anything but it, you know probably not it's probably not going to be something super memorable or anything even recent reviews are 57 percent, right so um most people are probably going to have an experience that is probably fairly forgettable it's free software though and if you want a zombie experience who knows maybe you'll you'll just get tickled at some point and be like ah, i just want to beat some zombies up and you, you give it a try and it's free you have it in your library already you know what i mean this is the thing i try to i try to prompt people for all the time especially on pc dude we get we get access to a lot of free content there's no point in not grabbing it if people want to turn their nose up to free software dude you must be living a better life than i am <laughs> you know and everybody's going to have a different experience with software Sometimes, you know, I mean, I've played banger games that had overwhelmingly positive reviews, like, um, what did we play? Uh, Valheim, where we had uh, a community member or two go, eh, it's not really my kind of game. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think with all due respect, you know, not everybody's gonna feel the same way I feel, not everybody's gonna feel the same way anybody else feels and free software is free software you know no no problem with having it in your library you know what i mean um and while it does look like it, it's not going to be a phenomenal experience or anything it's free yeah which is why i promote free software all the time <coughs> pcs where to get it you don't get that kind of stuff on console right so um just my own take on it uh oh i know soup sorry i know that you only buy 100 dollars games that you can't even play three days early when you're supposed to be able to <coughs> suicide squad <laughs> i told you not to yeah yeah i just brought that up yeah that's what i was just talking about yeah i mean it's 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 not a current game either i mean we're talking about a game that's like eight years old and everything you know so again it, I, don't, I don't think anybody should expect anything phenomenal here. You know, it's free though. It is free, so I'll pull it up. <clears throat> Space, Space Engineers was neat. With that. Connect your boxes with their connection points. Use any of the available resources in the store. Most very good, um, well thought out, well developed resource gathering, survival, base building types of games give you that nowadays v rising didn't and that was one of my biggest gripes about that game everything else felt really pretty solid um <clears throat> but that was what really got me to kind of be like i think i'm done <laughs> it got it got real cumbersome or is xbox part of the undead <laughs> oh dude what is this oh that was the uh the v rising stuff i'll actually uh just throw this in the discord yeah Tim, what have you been doing in elden ring dude i've been seeing you play some elden ring bro throw this in the discord real quick courtesy of Oh, boo! Work. But yeah, I mean, free software is free software. Got that. We'll talk about that. We got these up. Good. That, that, that. Cool. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking.
Oh, you're almost done with Demon Souls? Nice, dude. Nice. Sony said Rise of the Ronin was never a Ronin was never coming to South Korea. Interesting. Let's take a look at that. Uh, here's what you uh Yeah, so this basically yeah. So Wolverine's not hitting this year. We kind of knew that though. It seemed like. We got that up from uh soup though. Oh, gross. Rumored partnership between FIFA and 2K. <laughs> Jesus. Disgusting organization. Disgusting organization. Every screen is an Xbox. Yo, this is what I've been trying to tell people. Yeah, the Xbox is, uh, this is what I've been expecting from Xbox. They, it looks like their pivot is much more about brand in front of people rather than proprietary, like, hardware, you know, play, which has been the traditional play for console developers in, in the uh, gaming industry, you know. And I've talked about it a lot. But uh, I've got some new articles up on the YouTube page, actually. Um, wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I kind of talk about this to an extent with <clears throat> the games like Hi-Fi Rush coming to... PS5 or other consoles as well as uh, <laughs> people are going to get a kick out of this one. <laughs> yeah, dude, people, people aren't going to like this one. Get a, get a load of the uh, the title of this. People, people are not going to be happy about this one. Uh, I, na <laughs> I named this article. I'm baiting people, dude. I'm not going to lie. PS5 gamers will not now also get to the experience the empty world of Starfield. <laughs> Dude, people are going to be so pissed. <laughs> people are going to be so, so upset. There's going to be a lot of people that love it. There's going to be a lot of people that hate it. When iPhone? What do you mean? What do you mean when iPhone? When pigs fly? Dude. <laughs> so I've talked about basically in both of those articles there, I talk about kind of the way I've seen Xbox headed. And we're going to get a, a official details on that today when we watch the, uh, the showcase. Helldivers 2 developer hiring more staff to work on the game. This is good news in comparison to what, what we've seen a lot happening in the industry here with all the layoffs, man. iPhone 16? Yo. Oh, here, I've got one for you. All the Apple lovers out there. Here, this is for you, Soup. Get a load of, get there, get a load of that copium right there, buddy. There's your link, dude. <laughs> Crystal Dynamics has released new Tomb Raider art. Ooh. Oh, that's so gross, dude. We got the FIFA 2K thing up. <sighs> Suicide Squad killed Rocksteady as a developer. How about that's what we start calling that game? Oh, yo, Ferret. Oh, dude, Ferret would love that video, too. I need to, I need to make sure Ferret sees that video. 
I mean, dude, I made I made a lot of highlights last night. And I need to, I need to get some of them in the Discord. I tried to do it today. I needed to get some of them put in the Discord and tag people in them, but I didn't get it done last night. Um, it was a busy night. I was trying to get a lot of content done. It was Valentine's Day. My daughter had stuff going on. It was a busy night. So, um, but I'll try to get it done today. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will get a pre-launch graphics update for performance mode. Spider-Man 2 has sold 10 million copies. Good for them. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Look, man. Dude, I've, I've talked about this. I've been a bit worried about, um, you know, what Silent Hill 2 would be like with Bloober Team making it. I'm not, dude. I played Layers of Fear. Layers of Fear was balls. I'm sorry. Layers of Fear was terrible. I played Layers of Fear. I was planning on trying, because I'd never played Layers of Fear before. I was planning on trying Layers of Fear 1 and 2 during Scaretober this past year. I played the first one. And I was like, there is no flipping way I'm playing the second one. They were terrible. The first one was terrible. It was so bad. It was not scary at all. It was just dull. I was just yawning my way through the whole flipping game almost. It, it felt terrible. And I was just scared about what like Silent Hill 2 was going to be like with Bloober behind it. The thing that I was hopeful about was like, well, they've already got like the story and everything laid out for them. So hopefully it won't be too bad, but we'll see. PS Plus Extra and Premium Games for February have been revealed. I mean, considering it's February 15th, you know, and this is a short month. That song gets flipping loud, doesn't it? Laser beams. Well, yeah, dude. PS5 is entering the last half of its life cycle. Absolutely. Seven years is the average life cycle for a console. We are uh, three and a half years in. So, uh, not a surprise there. Oh, yo, here, I got your Skull and Bones article, too, dude. Here, check this out. You know? Here's your quadruple A. What? Ubisoft. What a weird company, dude. Oh man, uh, here's the pro. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. After 90 million driven by Baldur's Gate 3, Hasbro says games will be huge for D&D, and Larian's hit RPG is just the beginning. Right? Is that what they're saying? Just the first of several new video games to come. So here's the problem. Larian did a bang up job on Boulder's Gate 3 and because they did it uh, Boulder's Gate 3 traditional D&D &D, right <clears throat> now D&D is going to get popular now not that D&D &D wasn't already popular but it's definitely pushed it to the forefront of what a lot of companies are looking to do with their uh, RPGs now in the gaming industry so here is the, the deal, though. Just because a game is made on the D&D &D platform, you know, 
doesn't mean it's going to be good. It's just like all these other games. Just because a game says Star Wars, just because a game says Harry Potter, just because a game says Lord of the Rings, does not mean it's going to be good. Hasbro stoked because they're the ones that hold the licensing rights to D and D, right? So anything that gets made with a D and D license on it, they make a chunk off of, right? Sony trademarks intergalactic the heretic prophet. What is this? Bro, we got a lot of articles, but it's okay. We were we were off yesterday. We got some news to make up for here. It does look like Helldivers 2 has been doing pretty decent. It's been improving. Um for a double A game, you know, it's it's slowly creeping up upon that 80% positive. Um, people are enjoying it. I think it's had its issues on release, but Exodus reveals a new companion with mech armor, Elise Sharu. Sharu? What is it? That looks sick. Let's go. All right, let's stick with this. Let's go. These will be our articles for the day. Let's jump in here and see what we got. You guys ready for this? Cool. Let's do it. Swig a copy. Um, PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium Games for February Revealed. Uh, what do we got here? This month, the PlayStation Plus drop includes eight new games for PS Plus extra subscribers. Also for premium subscribers. And four new PS Plus premium classics. PS Plus extra games. Need for Speed Unbound. Outer World Spacer's Choice Edition. This was just given away during the holiday season on Epic as well. That's great. Tales of Arise. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. A game you will probably never finish. Lego Worlds. Jurassic World. Lego Jurassic World. Rogue Book. Rogue Lords. Tales of Zestiria. And then the premium games. Resistance Retribution. Jet Moto 2, Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Vesperia. Those are your PS Plus games coming to PS Plus. All right. They've got all the trailers in there. So if you need to look at any of them, it's in chat. All right. Sony trademarks Intergalactic, the Heretic Prophet in the U.S. Uh, let's see what this is. It was recently revealed the Sony Interactive, uh, Interactive Entertainment had filed a trademark on the name Intergalactic, the Heretic Prophet, in the United States, but nobody has any idea what that means. It has never been heard of before, and there's almost no information available on the filing, aside from the categories listed that the trademark applies to such uh, as video game software. 
Is this a new game? As discovered by Gamatsu, Sony has filed a trademark for what is assumed to be an all-new IP, but at present, the company hasn't said anything further about the name. It was pointed out in social circle, circles that in many cases, early names designated for games and end up being changed over time. This was said in response to comments that Intergalactic, the heretic prophet, isn't the most exciting name for a series of games. As a term, the name lends itself to a sci-fi title rooted in an alternate reality or universe, smacks of a futuristic title that's almost paradoxical. Well, we'll see what comes. Maybe we'll get some more info on this here pretty quick about what this is and if it's going to have a name change or stick with that. Interesting. Um, Exodus reveals new companion with mech armor, Elise Shero. Look at that. Look at that. Would you look at it? In a new blog post, uh, Archetype Entertainment revealed Elise today. Another companion coming to the studio's anticipated sci-fi RPG, Exodus. Today's post describes Elise as a sarcastic and well-trained soldier. Most notably, Elise comes with a customized mech suit. It has dual miniguns and shoulder-mounted grenade launchers, playing a tank role and soaking damage. The ultimate ability will be a micro-missile barrage, presumably for crowd control. The post also expands on Exodus's lore, explaining that Elise is one of the many sleepers who awaken after a long cryo sleep. The developers first revealed Exodus at the Game Awards last year. It will be a AAA game, featuring actor Matthew McConaughey in a surprising tie-in to Interstellar. The gameplay will heavily involve time dilation. Um, you know, they are calling it AAA, but if you were to ask um, the CEO of Ubisoft, they would probably call this quadruple-A. Archetype Entertainment uh, has not confirmed many gameplay details, so the mech suit may surprise some fans since such tools can seem a bit larger than life. However, today's new post takes uh, care to distinguish Elise from previously established characters. Elise's character is clearly a far cry from the Tom Vargas companion. Though they both have tragic backstories, Elise is athletic and full of firepower. She is also a, quote, former gang member, so there could be also be a potential redemption arc. These ongoing lore drops from uh, four companions reinforce that Exodus could still be Fairly character driven. Also, mechs are still a fan favorite among sci fi games. I love me mechs. Classics like Halo eventually introduced the Mantis, and Titanfall is still an iconic series that many fans hope will return. Armored Core 6 also launched last year to critical acclaim. Following the big Elise reveal, fans now have a better idea of when to expect the next companion announcement for Exodus. Uh, have we seen Exodus? Is there new. Other than the uh, the initial stuff, let me let me pull something up here. Things loud, do I? Music seems so flipping loud this morning, dude. Am I tripping? Exodus. Uh, it's like, that's pretty long. Yeah, the official cinematic reveal trailer. We'll just watch this real quick, how about it? But courageous. To save her planet, she was willing to sacrifice everything and travel to the stars. As a frontier world, we were barely hanging on. Desperate. We tried digging up our past to find the key to our future. Max, we need to head back. There's too much interference. Hold on. I'm getting a rebate. I can't. Max! No! What? What 
he found that day was a miracle. It would be our salvation. And she used that ship to explore the far-flung corners of the galaxy. A traveler on the hunt for celestial treasure. Careful, Max. The data structure is incredibly dense. This is it. <laughs> life on the line to bring back artifacts to put us on the path to scientific breakthroughs she risked everything time and again but despite her bravery eventually her luck would run out lucky for us she made it home safely while she was alive she was too humble to speak of her adventures, but at least we, her descendants, can honor her memory. Thank you all for visiting the museum today, and safe travels tomorrow. Hey, hey, that's off limits. She was always charging headfirst into the darkness. I was always one step behind, looking for the light switch. The Celestials hunted us down. I knew they'd keep chasing us until they ripped our ship apart. Come on! And I had to save her. knew the cost of using the gates. When you travel at light speed, time slows to a crawl. It was only days for me, but an entire lifetime passed for her. And in the chaos of those final moments, we never said goodbye. Okay. Yeah, so um, not a whole lot to go off there, um, gameplay-wise, but moving on. Um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We'll be getting a pre-launch graphics update for performance mode. Um... The demo for the anticipated Final Fantasy role-playing game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, will be getting a visual update. Excuse me. What is going on here? That's what I thought. Uh, which will also be applied to the main game on release. Official Final Fantasy VII Twitter X page announced the update to the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo scheduled for February 21st will apply improvements to the visual quality when selecting performance mode from the graphical options. 
The same improvements will also be applied to the full game. Clarified the statement, the update to the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo scheduled for February 21st will apply improvements to the visual quality when selecting performance mode from the graphics options. The same improvements will also be applied to the full game. This comes in response to reports from some fans that the demo's performance mode graphics uh, s suffered from issues. As our sister site GamesRadar reported, a whole bunch of folks on special media are disappointed by the demo's visual presentation. Whether it's the lack of interactive foliage, muddy textures, technical issues, or just the image quality overall. Reddit user JMN, what is that? JM Nerd, Nerd T9 <laughs> highlighted these issues in a post last week. Saying that they were disappointed with the demo's graphics, I spotted a fair uh, few subpar textures and models in the demo. I can't help but feel a little bit down about it. It is unknown if this will coincide with Square Enix's plan to expand the demo later this month by adding access to the Junon area. The demo has also sparked discourse surrounding its climbing sections, which mark interactable handholds with yellow paint. While some have responded positively, seeing this as a helpful accessibility feature, others expressed concern the yellow paint was indicative of lazy environmental design. Despite these issues, we at Tech Radar Gaming were very impressed by our hands-on preview, uh, hands-on with a preview build of Rebirth. The fluid combat, exceptional writing, and rewarding exploration all suggest that the RPG could well deliver once it's released on February 29th for PS5. Yeah, this is the second game in the uh, trilogy of the FF7 remakes, uh, which the original Final Fantasy VII first released in 1997, and is my favorite game of all time. By the way, um, I have uh, the game looks very good. I will be playing all three of these when they hit PC together. So, um. But I am very interested. This demo, um, it, I've already heard, is pretty good. The game looks phenomenal. The trailer looked, was very well done. What they showed in the trailer looked great. And um, it does seem like it's going to be one of the better releases this year. Uh, as long as it releases in a fairly polished, you know, very finished state, um, it looks like the content's going to be pretty phenomenal. I, I am expecting big things from uh, Rebirth. Sony has said Rise of the Ronin was never coming to South Korea. It was recently claimed that as a result of controversial comments from Team Ninja, Sony had blocked the launch of Rise of Ronin in South Korea. It was said that a sensitive political topic brought up by inflammatory comments made by the game's director had led Sony to pull pre-orders of the game in the country, but Sony has now cleared the air on the subject by insisting the game was never officially announced for release in Korea. That's one way to put it. Sony has confirmed to IGN that Rise of the Ronin is not going to be sold or published in South Korea in any form, physical or digital, but nobody knows why. It's a confusing situation that was exacerbated by some standout tidbits in the last week or so. For instance, the Korean ratings board listed Rise of the Ronin. There's a version of the game with Korean language support. And when Rise of the Ronin was revealed in 2022, it was featured on the South Korean PlayStation blog. In a statement, a Sony spokesperson reportedly said, Rise of the Ronin for PS5 was never officially announced for release in Korea. That's the situation cleared up then. Rise of the Ronin releases exclusively on PS5 on March 22nd, bringing open world sword swinging action to players everywhere. Okay, so there you have it. Looks like it's not hitting South Korea. In any form or fashion, Soup. Rumored partnership between FIFA and 2K. Oh my God. You know? The funny, the funniest thing about this is kind of the fact that to, uh, FIFA was uh, not willing to pay EA what EA uh, wanted for a new contract to continue doing the FIFA games, right? And so... FIFA, look, EA's a disgusting video game developer and publisher. FIFA's a terribly disgusting um, organization, which obviously handles, you know, a, a large football organization. They are just no concern at all for, for um, anything other than money. 
it's actually disgusting. You go look at a lot of what FIFA's done over the years. It's a really, really scummy corporation. And um, 2K is all uh, right up there with EA, you know, in the same kind of uh, situation as EA is in the video gaming industry. So, um, you know, FIFA has uh, jumped ship from EA, tried to get a bunch of Web3 NFT crypto based games going under the FIFA brand. And while EA just said, okay, well, we'll just keep making the same soccer slash football games we always have and just take all the FIFA branding out of it. They've continued to do that. It's been good for them, unfortunately. And uh, now FIFA's like, all right, well, the games that we were making uh, are not panning out. And so it looks like they're, they're trying to figure out a way to start making games with 2K now. The, the only positive I see coming out of this is potential competition if 2k and fifa can collaborate in making a game that can compete quality wise with ea sports fc right that means there's competition that means that both of these companies will be competing for um on the front of a game that, uh, you know, right now only really has one major player in EA's title. So what competition does is it elevates the need for a better quality game from each developer as well as, you know, it quite often will um, bring price points of certain things down and everything too. So uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. But uh, that's about the only positive I could see coming out of this. All three of these organizations are actually disgusting. So, um, we'll read this. Recent rumblings with, within the online gaming community have sparked widespread speculation regarding a potential collaboration between FIFA, the international governing body of association football, and 2K. A prominent American video game publisher renowned for its diverse portfolio, the Reported Endeavor aims to birth a new video game franchise, igniting excitement and anticipation among gaming enthusiasts. Um, Mike Straw tweeted out, I'm hearing rumors that FIFA slash 2K are working to announce a partnership for 2K made uh, to make an officially licensed FIFA game. The development follows FIFA's decision to terminate its long-standing partnership with EA just a year prior, signaling a seismic shift in the gaming landscape. The dissolution of FIFA EA Alliance marked the end of a steroid era that began in 93 when the two industry giants joined forces to pioneer the iconic soccer gaming experience. Since parting ways, EA has swiftly forged new alliances, including strategic partnerships with Spain's prestigious La Liga and the burgeoning National Women's Soccer League, cementing its foothold in the realm of digital sports entertainment. However, FIFA's trajectory since the separation has left fervent fans eagerly awaiting any news about the next chapter in virtual soccer immersion, leading many to latch onto rumors of a collaboration with 2K. Established in 2005, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, 2K uh, features a multitude of AAA titles spanning sports and entertainment genres, notably including globally recognized franchises like the NBA and WWE games. Many individuals hold the belief that the collaboration between these two industry juggernauts may one day materialize into the creation of a groundbreaking new video game. However, it's essential to recognize that currently there is no concrete information available to substantiate these speculations, leaving enthusiasts to engage in spirited discussions fueled by rumors and conjecture. Given the widespread global appeal of soccer slash football as a beloved sport, the absence of dedicated video game would seem inexplicable. Hence, it comes to no surprise that fans are eagerly clamoring for any semblance of news or updates regarding this tantalizing possibility. <laughs> That escalated quickly, Soup. Uh, Crystal Dynamics has released new Tomb Raider art. Laura! <coughs> Looking fit! And, uh, by the way, also not looking 12 years old, Soup. I'll uh, take those balls, too, though. Next to <laughs> I love balls. <laughs> Well played. Well played. 
Well, on a Crystal Dynamics backed website boasting all things Tomb Raider, fresh art for the upcoming in development game of the same name has been revealed in two shots. We see what's being dubbed a unified Lara. <laughs> what? No, not the same mug. Not the same mug. Different mug. Guaranteed. I just got this mug. If that's what you mean. Definitely a different mug. <laughs> In two shots, we see what's being dubbed as unified Lara Croft. A perfect hybrid between classic Lara and the more recent character model that has existed since 2013. It's not our first time seeing this particular character, though. New, but not for everyone. Call of Duty fans will recognize the Lara Croft featured in the new art found on TombRaider.com. It's the same character model made by Model Made, available in an exclusive Tomb Raider bundle last year. In traditional Tomb Raider format, the artwork shows the legendary heroine dual-wielding Colt pistols while sporting her typical blue tank top and short shorts. Who wears short shorts? Lara does. In one shot, Croft is preparing to fight a fearsome Tyrannosaurus Rex, a throwback to the first game in the series. There's not much uh, more known about the in-development game at present. It was revealed recently that there's a new live-action series being created by Amazon, which pur purchased the licensing rights to Tomb Raider in 2022 for a reported $600 million. Uh, if you want to see the art for yourself, you'll need to sign up on TombRaider.com and solve a simple puzzle. It wouldn't be Tomb Raider without a puzzle, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. You like the uh, the uh, character from Stellar Blade that looks like she's 12. I get it, dude. Not weird at all. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 devs, Bloober team, trailer wasn't representative of the game <laughs> with a noob um at the end of january the playstation state of play showcase was streamed online and a key part of that event was the reveal of a brand new combat trailer for silent hill 2 sadly that trailer failed to capture the core element of what makes silent hill one of the most legendary horror franchises ever making it seem much more action-packed and energetic than it actually is Recently, an interview surfaced online talking to the developer of Silent Hill 2 Remake, Bloober Team, in which the president of the company spoke about the online reaction to the trailer. The spirit of the game. In the interview, which has now been taken down pending maintenance, uh, Pyotr Babino, Babino, the head honcho at Bloober, touched on the topic of the negativity aired following... <coughs> The release of the new trailer he cut a few jokes about the topic and then got serious making it clear that we are not responsible for the marketing side that is entirely the responsibility of our partner konami certainly this trailer does not reflect the spirit of the game it is not the spirit of either uh what is used to be or what we are creating now we stress that gamers but especially longtime fans of the franchise will judge it in a completely different way when they finally get their hands on the highly anticipated product it was recently confirmed that Silent Hill 2 is close to being finished. There's no release date available just yet. I I, I would say expect this close to uh, October. That's a very good play for this game. Uh, it'll be the light, latest in a long line of horror remakes to hit the market, following in the success uh, successful footsteps of, of the Resident Evil series, among others. Um, yeah, so what what is this dude? <laughs> oh jesus uh, konami did them uh, a dirty thing showed old build she looks 12 dog she looks 12 she looks 12 laura looks like a woman no she does not look 19 dog no no way no no way no way no way dude she looks 12 bro <laughs> laura looks that's a that's a woman bro that's a woman what is this that's a 12 year old that's a 12 year old dog look at this woman child woman 
child, woman, child, woman, child. <laughs> Weep. <laughs> Yo, so, um, yeah, look, I think, uh, I understand why people would be upset here because Silent Hill 2 is, is about the uh, the the frightening atmosphere, not just about combat in the game. Obviously, combat is a, a a mechanic in the game. It's an aspect of what happens when you're playing this game. But this game is known for the frightening atmosphere and uh, the spooky, you know, kind of mechanics that play along with with what you're experiencing in the game that's the big part of what made silent hill uh such a huge thing not the combat necessarily it's the combat being good is going to play you know a, 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 an important role but it's not going to be the primary thing about this game right he does <laughs> just soup. you know i love you dude I'm just messing with you, man. Um, so, I understand, you know, in, in, I, I mean, here, <laughs> look, this is a tough thing to determine. This is a tough thing to determine. So, so uh, obviously, this is, there's, there's some weird stuff going on here. So, this is Bloober calling out Konami, their partner. First and foremost, let's, let's address the elephant in the room here bloober is literally calling out konami and going way to you know way to botch the uh trailer <laughs> you know? like that's a that's a weird look um i'm pretty sure this is the first time they've collabed on anything so so that's a bit of a weird look while i mean honestly it, i mean i i respect the crap out of it though if 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 konami actually did do them uh an injustice by showcasing less than what the game actually has to offer then good on blooper for calling them out but we don't necessarily know that's the truth yet do we we don't know what all content that konami had to work off of at the time whatever um and so you know can you know blooper can say this kind of stuff all day long but we don't necessarily know what the truth is right i will say this i've i've played bloober games and i haven't been a big fan of them in the past so i think that they were lucky to get uh brought on to do this because the game has already got the narrative and everything set forth before it uh which made it pretty easy for them to just follow that and and develop everything around that it was already done in large part <laughs> so i don't know this is a weird situation and i hope for all the fans of silent hill 2 the game um is a testament and a, a very nice um modern representation of what made the original game so great but we'll see We'll see very soon, too, right? We'll find out. Uh, Xbox Game Pass adds two new games with very positive reviews. Okay. Two more titles are added to the diverse catalog of games available on Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass subscription service for Xbox One and Series X and S. What do we have here? Game Pass subscribers can now enjoy two indie games. A little to the left and played up which are being added to the service as of today <laughs> a little to the left is a cozy puzzle game and it has received positive reviews and offers players the opportunity to organize and tidy everyday household objects played up is a cha chaotic restaurant management game that allows players to build and customize their own restaurant with options for a high-tech kitchen or more traditional setting i have not played either of these games but i have ver heard very good things about played up all right uh, if you want to read the rest of this or uh, look at screenshots and stuff like that, then I'll link it for you. But that's what you need to know as of today. A little to the left and played up are available on Game Pass.
Um. Okay. We had heard some speculation there was maybe some Avatar game coming our way soon, and it looks like Avatar The Last Airbender multiplayer fighting video game is in the works. Um, a multiplayer fighting video game based on Nickelodeon's beloved animated series Avatar The Last Airbender, soon to be a live-action Netflix show, is in the works. The game is set at Maximum Entertainment in a new pact with Paramount Games Studio. Maximum revealed the new title during its presentation of its 2024 lineup and promotion of the unification of its publishing labels. Maximum Games Modus Games, just for fun games, and Merge Games, as well as development division Modus Studios under the Maximum Entertainment banner. Other announcements made by Maximum during the event include... Um, Stealth Lost, Small End Survival of the Wilds 1.0 release, Maximum Football Dev Update, Morbid the Lords of Ire release date, the first reveal of Leo the Firefighter Cat, Whisker Waters release date. Maximum says under its new reorg that the company is now centralized for full integration and seeks to increase IP ownership to 30% of revenue by 2025. This is Maximum Entertainment's 2024 Roadmap. Let's see what we got here. Oh my god, dude. That is 17 minutes long. I'll let you guys watch it. Maybe I'll turn it on uh, during a, uh, a break or something today, too. Do that. Let you guys see what the roadmap is, but I'll link it for now. So if you want to take a look at what their roadmap is, but that's a bit uh, lengthy considering we're already quite a bit ways into the uh, new segment and we've got a lot more to go or a bit more to go anyways. Um, Sony wants to improve PlayStation profit margins with more aggressive PC release strategy. Oh, baby. <coughs> Actually, we might finish up with that. Let's move some of this stuff to the front. Um, Courtesy of our friendo Ferret, who is a big Destiny 2 aficionado, um, and is always willing to help people uh, learn the game and to help people grind and level up, uh, whatever. Then, um, you know, if, if anybody's interested in playing Destiny 2, then uh, you can absolutely reach out to our buddy Ferret in our Discord channel. And uh, he is very, very well versed in Destiny 2 and is an amazing individual that is always willing to help. So uh, don't be shy. Ferret's amazing. Great, great person and uh, is good at what he does in Destiny 2. Now, on that note, thank you, Ferret, for this. If anybody's interested, okay, um, there is a Destiny 2 Humble Bundle. Um, so, if you weren't able or missed buying into the, or buying into, getting the, um, what is it, the, uh, there was a pack that released on Epic at the end of the year, um, last year, that had the first three DLC in it. So, um, on Epic, you might already have the base game and some of the DLC if you got into that. If not, then it looks like you can get into um, getting Destiny 2 and all the current DLC at a pretty nice price point. If you look at Steam, uh, all of these DLC usually cost quite a bit. Obviously, the base game is free. Right, but the DLC can can get costly. Um, the is it the Legacy Collection? That has the uh, what is it, the Leg Legacy Collection? I think it's the Legacy Collection, right? Uh, Legacy Collection is the one that they gave away. It gets the uh, Witch Queen, Beyond Light, Shadowkeep. All those DLC 
come with the legacy collection. That's what was given away on the um, the epic giveaway at the end of last year. But you can see that, uh, and not all of these are necessary, but there is a good amount of DLC. I think all the DLC at a normal price will cost you somewhere around $200, $250 to get to be able to play all the content. Something like that. It will go on sale from time to time. Um, but this Humble Bundle deal can apparently get you... Uh, is it all for... Lightfall. Year 6 complete. So at $20... You're getting um, everything, but it's going to be the Lightfall uh, Year 6 Base Edition. And at $40, you get the uh, Lightfall Plus Annual Pass. So that's going to be the difference. You can pay $45 and $50 to pay more and give to charities, stuff like that. If you're not uh, familiar with Humble Bundle, it's a pretty good organization where um, they've got different charities, organizations. You can adjust your donations. Um, you can customize it, all kinds of stuff for... Uh, how much goes to the developer, how much goes to um, Humble Bundle, how much goes to the charity of your, you, you can pick different charities, stuff like that. Um, it, it just totally up to you. So if you're interested in some Destiny content, here you go. Remake Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring. Stop it. You stop it. You make me throw up. Stop it. What? Stop it. You know what you're doing. You're choosing violence. I don't think any Souls game gets remade before uh, Bloodborne does anyways. I think Bloodborne gets remade and comes out with the PS6. I don't think another uh, Soulsborne game gets remade before that. I think Bloodborne gets remade. Or a sequel. I think it gets remade. I think it gets a remake. Could be a sequel though. But you've got Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 release. It doesn't need a remake, dude. Maybe a remaster? It doesn't need to be remade right now, I don't think. A remaster would be fine. I don't think it needs a remake right now. And Elden Ring? Elden Ring Remake? What? You're out of your mind. <laughs> Yo, thanks to Soup for this. This actually hit our Discord yesterday as well. So if you did not see this and you're not part of our Discord, which you should be, Here's your link. Um, come join our Discord. We've got a uh, gamers deals uh, section, right uh, over here. This is our gamers deal channel, right? Uh, there's also a free game on GOG right now called Flat Out, um, which is free. De uh, Dead Island Riptide free. RPG Maker uh, XP has been free as well here recently. Uh, lots of free games. <laughs> so. Um, brother what's happening oh, i didn't mean to do that but um we also if anybody finds good deals on gaming tech or hardware or whatever then they'll get put into this channel as well so um we have a bot that is currently uh or uh constantly scanning for free software uh for us as gamers and throwing it into the uh the channel for us and everything so uh join the discord make sure you're aware of where to get your free content at uh, you can pick up Dead Island Riptide free to celebrate Dead Island 2's inevitable hop to Steam. No PC video game storefront is an island. Yeah, so, I mean, we pulled this up earlier. I'll give you the link to it on Steam as well. But 
Um, this is basically just going to point out the fact that you can get this, give you the links and everything as well. So uh, what I'll do is just go ahead and show you this. It is free currently. It won't be free for very long. Um, again, I mean, I think that what you need to understand is uh, recently it's got mixed reviews. All reviews all the time. It's 73% positive. It's not going to be a mind-blowing experience, but it's free. It's a free game, and it you can't really argue with free games. There's nothing wrong with just throwing it in your library just in case. Um, so... There you go. There's the Dead Island. Um, get that. And um, here is your video. I'll just show you a video for it real quick. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, yeah. We were just attacked. Maybe now we can hold out. Tomorrow's the release date for Skull and Bones. You think it'll actually release? <laughs> Yo, I already linked this before, but I've got an article for that. Going out there, are you nuts? On three. One, two, fucking About the quadruple A game that is Skull and Bones. Beautiful. For a moment, you can almost forget. Or a bot on the YouTube page about it. Man, she's hot. Because she's on fire. <laughs> you a dead bitch now. There you go, man. It's linked right there too, so you guys can grab it for free right now. Thanks, Soup. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the next thing, Sony Interactive Entertainment will not release any new major existing franchise titles before March 31st of 2025. So it looks like we're, we're about to have a PlayStation drought, um, other than Rebirth. I think Rebirth is going to be probably the last one and there won't be really much else. It, that's the way this sounds anyways. Oh, my bad. Um, let's read this and see what they have to say though. We all good? Everything good? You guys good? Let's turn on that music. Let's get it. There we go. Um, so Sony Interactive Entertainment does not plan to release any new major existing franchise titles next fiscal year, which begins on April 1st of 2023. That is wrong. That would have been the beginning of uh, this fiscal year, which started last year. This is a miss, uh, a, a, a mistype here. So um, the next fiscal year begins on April 1st of 2024 and will end on March 31st of 2025. Uh, Gamatsu, you might want to do some editing for your articles before you publish them. The company said during its fiscal year 2023, uh, this would be 2024 quarter three earnings briefings. They screwed some stuff up here. Regarding, uh, regarding first party software, we aim to continue to focus on producing high quality works and developing live service games. Sony Group President, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer Hiroki Tataki said, but while major projects are currently under development, we do not plan to release any new major existing franchise titles next fiscal year, like God of War Ragnarok and Marvel Spider-Man 2. 
Wait, what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like God of War Ragnarok and Marvel Spider-Man 2. It should be noted that while major existing franchise titles, including intellectual property such as God of War and Marvel Spider-Man, it does not include new intellectual property like Concord or major non-major existing franchises like Until Dawn. Talking continued. When is the, when was this? Yeah, yeah, okay. Taki continued, although the burden of acquisition-related costs will ease next fiscal year, we expect profit from first-party software to decrease slightly from this fiscal year due to the impact of the decrease in sales. Due to this operating income for the next fiscal year is currently expected to increase slightly from this, this fiscal year. However, while this, while this our baseline, we are reviewing measures for further improvement and profitability in advance of the annual forecast results announcement this May. Taki also discussed the company's future outlook for PS5 hardware sales during the next fiscal year. Regarding the PS5 hardware, which will enter its fifth year since launch, partially due to its entering the latter half of the console cycle, we aim to optimize sales with a greater emphasis on balance with profits, so we anticipate a gradual decline in unit sales from next fiscal year onwards. Uh, we expect third-party software sales to continue to expand gra uh, gradually due to the expansion of the PS5 install base and the higher level of user engagement. Yeah. And he just talked about his role as a chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment. You can read that if you want. So it looks like uh, a lot of the big first party games first. Uh, the big takeaway here is we shouldn't expect for the next fiscal year um, for there to be a lot of big first party games playstation games there's going to be a bit of a drought there <clears throat> bit of a drought so don't expect much I think after rebirth after rebirth hits you shouldn't expect a whole lot for about another year after that now Oh, uh, this is the last thing I have to talk about today for the news. And um, after we address this, we'll move on and we'll play some Fallout New Vegas for the rest of the day. Maybe even finish it up, okay? I'm shooting to try to finish this up uh, by either the end of today or tomorrow at some point, And then we'll move on to a new game. So, um, this is good news for all of us PC fans. They had already... So the title of this is Sony wants to improve PlayStation profit margins with more aggressive PC release strategy. And Hiroki Tataki says the company has to proactively work on making more games multi-platform. The, uh, they'd already approached this in a, a more aggressive stance over the past couple of years but to hear that they're even going to be uh coming at this even harder for us is a good look for all of us pc gamers now um whenever i first started streaming back in 2021 i had kind of made a note of the fact that i saw sony missing some opportunity on the front of not having their first party games at least on another platform like PC because of what the pandemic did to them in regards to making it so hard for people to get a hold of their hardware. So the pandemic was very good for gaming on the front of software, right? Everybody was playing games, but it was terrible for hardware developers. It was all the factories were shut down. Nobody could get, you know, nothing could, could get created as far as hardware was concerned. It was so terribly hard to get your hands on anything hardware from PC components to, to consoles, you name it. It was just incredibly hard. Um, and what I noticed was while software was doing very good on a lot of fronts, it was also rough on some developers because companies like PlayStation had good first party software, but if you didn't have a PS5, you couldn't play a lot of it. So it was kind of hurting them. The fact that they didn't have their first party software um, hitting other platforms in a relatively quick manner. So
so not hitting and obviously we knew that playstation's not going to be putting their first party software on like nintendo or xbox right but to also not having it hit something like pc was something i think uh hurt them significantly where they could have been uh bringing in significantly more profit and revenue um had they been multi-platform on on two pc with the first party software in a relatively timely manner after initial release um i'd never expect playstation to be releasing first party software on pc the the day one or anything but you know i had noted that and then um uh, when you take into consideration um this as well right playstation should have remained as exclusive though right to give a reason to buy a console no i mean That's literally opposite of what I just talked about. I mean, most of the reason why, so that's obviously why they're not going to release on Xbox or Nintendo, because if anybody's going to play there, and that's why their things will, the, their proprietary software will remain exclusive to PlayStation on release. It won't release on even PC day one. That's still going to be their way to try and prompt people to buy into PlayStation's hardware, right? But they're losing out. They're losing money by <clears throat> not having their software on another platform. They make great software, but I think they realize there, there's, there's two things going on here, right? There's two things going on here. There are a lot of people like me that see that they have some decent first party software, but aren't willing to spend the amount of money they want for their hardware just to play the few games that look interesting. As well as the fact of this. When you look at the, I'll, I'll zoom out on this a little bit to begin with and then we'll zoom in on it, okay? So you look at this, this is, um, my camera's gonna be in the way a little bit, but I'll, I'll move up and down so you guys can see this. Um, this is a 50 years of video game revenue. This is from 1970 to 2022. And what we're going to pay attention to here is the most recent numbers here, right? So when you pay attention to revenue in the gaming industry, obviously mobile's massive, right? Mobile, uh, in 2022 took a cut of $101 billion, right? We know mobile's huge. Mobile is huge. Um, but let's just not pay attention to mobile. What we want to pay attention to here is the console and PC side of the market, which is this down here, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in on this and we'll get a better look at, at what I'm talking about here. So, between PC, you've got in 2022, $45 billion and console at 30 billion, right? And, um, What you need to understand first and foremost here is that this is also console being split between three major players, right? Three major players in the console market. So you're talking Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox. While PC overall is at 45 billion, 15 billion dollars over what console altogether is bringing in. Yeah. So you have to understand that from PlayStation's point of view, also when looking at these numbers, it makes sense money wise to be getting their software onto the PC platform in a relatively timely manner. PlayStation is very traditional. They don't want to change. They don't want to do anything different than they ever have, but they almost have to. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Things are changing, right? Um, you can see a time down here. The, the early 2000s, you know, um, the 2000s all the way till about 2010, 
you know, you're talking about an entire decade where a console was really kind of throttling PC. But from for about roughly the past 15 years, PC's really been pulling ahead of what console does. And so when you take a look at it from that perspective, it, it seems like it's taken a bit too long, honestly, in my opinion, for a company like PlayStation to go, yeah, we're probably missing out on some pretty good profit here. Again, I don't expect them to be releasing their games on PC day one because that eliminates their entire point of doing first party software, right? First party software, the point of that is to get people to buy into PlayStation's platform. They're gonna still do that, but getting it on the PC platform in a timely manner is important, right? The quicker you get something that is released uh, on another platform, the, the, the more hype that's still generated about it after release. You know, PlayStation, up until here recently, had not been getting their games pushed over to the PC platform for two, three, four years sometimes. And by that time, people have moved on to other other things. They're not worried about those games anymore. You know, they're kind of old news most of the time, right? And at the same time, if you're trying to release a game that's four years old, even if you're releasing it on a new platform, people are going to go, why, why would I pay this much for this game when it's not even new? It's four years old. Yeah, it's new to this platform, but it's still a four-year-old game. So that doesn't make a lot of sense either, right? So it makes more sense for PlayStation to be releasing their games in a six month to one year period after the the release of of the software on their own platform right um this is something that they had needed to be doing for a while in my opinion and so um it makes sense to see this happen i've talked about this for a while it hasn't come up for a while but i've i've seen this be a thing that that they needed to pivot into doing for a while it just makes sense you know, so uh, let's read this. Sony president and PlayStation chairman Hiroki Tataki wants the company to be aggressive when it comes to improving its gaming division's profit margins, which he says can partly be achieved with a greater focus on bringing first party games to PC. During a Q&A session following Sony's latest financial results briefing, Tataki was asked why the gaming division is seeing an increase in gross income, but not in profits, whether there were any initiatives plans to improve the bottom line. He replied that there were two main factors he wanted to focus on, hardware and first-party games. In terms of hardware, he noted that cost reduction in this console cycle is really difficult to come by compared to previous generations due to the increased price of components and implied that console prices wouldn't be dropping while it looked for ways to improve margins. Quote, how can we, given this situation, put our product lines together to make it affordable without relying on steep discounts to reasonably sell them to continue our commercial journey on a sustainable basis, he asked. I personally think that's important and there is an opportunity in that. Tataki then addressed the topic of first-party games and made it clear that he feels releasing them multi-platform, which he seemingly clarified as meaning PC, continues to be the way forward. You're not going to see PlayStation move over to like Xbox or Nintendo right now. You're not going to see that. PC makes more sense. In the past, because they've already been doing that. But being timelier about it, more aggressive about it, right, makes makes more sense. In the past, we wanted to popularize consoles and as a first party, as a first party title's main purpose was to make the console popular, he explained. This is true, but there's a synergy to it. If you have strong first party content, not only on our console, but other, also other platforms, like computers, a first party game can be grown with multi-platform and that can help operating profit to improve. So that's another one we want to proactively work on. I personally think there are opportunities out there for improvement of margin. So I'd like to go aggressive on improving our margin performance. Sony's in the process of ramping up the numbers of first party games it brings to PC, although they usually arrive sometime after their PS5 release. Earlier this month, however, Helldivers 2 released PS5 and PC on the same day. The result was PlayStation Studios' highest concurrent Steam player record yet, with more users playing Helldivers 2 at the same time on PC than was previously achieved by ports of more uh, higher profile Sony IPs such as God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and The Last of Us Part 1. We talked about this. Now, had Sony released games like God of War, 
Horizon Zero Dawn and The Last of Us Part 1 on PC the same time they released them on PlayStation day one like they did with Hell Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 would not be uh, at, at the top of this list. Absolutely not. But that wasn't the case. And so Helldivers 2 does sit there. In 2022, PlayStation Studios head Herman Holst said he thought Sony's future console games would have to wait at least a year before coming to PC, aside from live service titles. Yeah, uh, while Tataki did not explicitly say that Sony has plans for more day and date PC releases of PS5 titles, his comments may suggest a change of policy is being planned. Tataki assumed the role of chairman of CEO Sony's Interactive Entertainment last October ahead of Jim Ryan's retirement and will act as interim CEO of SIE from April 1st. So we will be taking a more hands-on approach with the company's game, games division. Yeah. Um, I do think that this probably means that uh, Sony is going to be more focused at getting their first-party games on PC quicker. Which makes sense. It's been a very, very uh, obvious thing, in my opinion, that they needed to do for a while. I don't know what's taken them so long to, to get to this point of just finally, you know, going, yeah, we should probably do that. It seems it seemed very apparent to me a long time ago. But, um, you know, the thing that uh, I had been talking about here recently in regards to this situation is, you know, we've got some games that you know should be actually hitting pc before long if you think about it we've got god of war ragnarok we've got ghost of tsushima and one of the more recent released games uh, that will be a test of how quick they get with this sentiment in play how quick they're going to start getting their games to pc would be spider-man 2 right so uh, God of War Ragnarok has been out for uh, over a year now. Yes. And uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And um, I don't remember when that released, but it's been out for a good good bit now too. So it shouldn't be too long before we see those games come into the fold for us this year. Right? Now, Spider-Man 2 just releasing at the end of last year should give us a really nice look at how aggressive they're planning on being with releasing these first party games on PC moving forward. And that's the news. My dudes. It's time to play games. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, to an extent, right? I think that, you know, even when you talk about, you know, we've got all this talk right now with uh, Xbox going multi-platform in a way that we've never seen another console player do that was still making hardware, right? We are talking about Xbox is talking about their first party games going and being on Nintendo and being on PlayStation and stuff like that, right? Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, it, you know, Xbox is doing it in a way where we, we haven't really, you know, even with that notion, you're not going to see first party Xbox games really hit other platforms um, until it's hit Xbox first and PC because that's what Xbox does, right? Xbox platform, PC first, and then shortly thereafter, you'll probably see it hit Nintendo and PlayStation consoles. We'll get more on that today later on when we watch the uh, showcase. But uh, same thing with the PlayStation and them being more aggressive with PC. I think that's what you'll see. It'll, it'll hit... First party PlayStation games will normally hit PlayStation's console first because that'll still prompt people to buy the hardware that are interested in buying the hardware. And uh, then shortly thereafter, in a timely manner, it will hit PC as well because it just makes too much sense. It's too lucrative for them not to do it. So it, it, it does make sense. It does make sense. It's not going to be a lot of day one releases on on, on, on all the platforms they're going to release on, right? The first party titles. But it'll be shortly thereafter. And it does make sense. Absolutely. Um, you guys rock. It's always good to be back, dude, after the day off. Um, we've got some new articles and, and new segments and stuff up on the YouTube page. So go take a look if you want. Um, some fun stuff there. Um, I've got some new highlights and clips of gameplay that I need to get put in the discord tag some people in and stuff so you guys can have some fun looking at that but um, always good to be back 
happy Thursday. The weekend's almost here, man. The weekend's almost here. Holy moly, man. Uh, so keep on grinding. Uh, we'll be there before you know it. You guys rock. Thanks for uh, always being a part of what we do. You know who I'm talking to, man. Big shout out to Tenwin today for the 30-month resubby, dude. Holy crap, dude. 30 months. My dude. Um, incredible amount of support, my friend. I really, really appreciate it, man. So, um, we're going to move on. We're going to play some Fallout New Vegas for the rest of the day. But if anybody is hanging out and you are not familiar with what we do here, this is how we start off all of our streams six days a week. Uh, we're off on Wednesdays. But we always begin with video gaming news at roughly 6 a.m. CST CDT. Try to stay current with what's happening in the industry all the way around. And, uh, you know, then we move on and play games like we're about to do. We've got an amazing community of people here. And we're always looking for more good peeps to come be a part of what we do. Uh, try to cultivate and, and uh, just create a community that's very welcoming and, and inviting, spreading good vibes, trying to... Uh, you know, create a, a friendships, long lasting place for people to come be a part of, enjoy video games, but also be void of toxicity and negativity and, and just create a, a nice environment for people to want to hang out in day in and day out. So if you can dig it, come be a part of what we do, man. Other than that, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. I'm not going anywhere. We're staying live, baby. But I'm going to run us an outro real quick. And as soon as I get back from the outro being run, we're going to start getting ready to play games. So uh, big love, yo. See you guys in just one moment.